Hi, my name is Dr. Kirmani, and today I'll be talking about chronic fatigue syndrome. This video will have information about what's chronic fatigue syndrome, its causes, symptoms, diagnosis, and how to manage it, and its outcome. What's chronic fatigue syndrome? It's also known as myalgic encephalomyelitis, post-viral syndrome, Icelandic disease, or royal free disease. It's a chronic tiredness that persists for more than six months and causes significant reduction in physical activity by at least 50%. Organic disease or psychiatric causes are absent. It can happen at any age, but it's most commonly found in women between the age groups of 45 to 55 years. Now, causes. So far, the cause is unknown. We do know that about two out of three patients have a viral flu-like illness beforehand. No single virus has yet been identified and is similar to the chronic fatigue that can follow glandular fever. And recently, it is also found in patients that re recover from COVID-19. Well, in other patients, CFS simply develops out of the blue and the body's immune system responds, but in an abnormal way. Regarding symptoms, four or more of these symptoms must be present in order to diagnose this condition. A person may have extreme exhaustion with little physical effort, headache or vague fuzzy feelings in the head, aching in the muscles and legs after exercise. They may have an emotional roller coaster, poor concentration, memory problems, sleep problems, especially excessive sleeping, or feeling extremely tired on waking. Many people may complain of feelings of depression, feeling very flat and unwell after exertion, aching in the joints, sore throat, palpitations like raising of heart, or they might feel feverish with swollen glands in the neck and various other symptoms. The causes of fatigue can be some, something to do with physical illness or psychiatric issues. So we need to rule them out before diagnosing this condition. The common causes of fatigue can be infections, anemia, diabetes, hypothyroidism, urinary tract infection, depression, drugs such as vitamin A and D toxicity, over-the-counter painkillers, antihistamines, birth control pills, antihypertensives, or antiemetics. Well, tiredness in children can be due to excessive exercise, lack of sleep, poor diet, infections, or allergies including asthma. Apart from this, a person may also be have, go, undergoing bereavement or may be having a burnout due to emotional exhaustion or lack of personal accomplishment. Some people may also have inadequate sleep problems as the cause of tiredness. Now regarding diagnosis of this condition, it's a diagnosis of exclusion, which means that we need to exclude other organic causes and do certain tests. All the tests will be normal. The tests include blood tests to look for anemia or any other inflammatory conditions, urine tests to exclude urinary tract infection, thyroid, liver and kidney function tests to find out their functioning, blood sugar because hypo or hyperglycemia can be a cause of exhaustion, and serum electrolytes. Regarding management, there's no magic drug treatment. So the management is mainly support and care. It's important to be reassured that CFS is usually a self-limiting problem. In some cases, it can clear up in two years, but in others, it can take more than 10 years. The patient is the major care of his or her body and must listen to it and work out a day-to-day -day plan of what to do in conjunction with your doctor. It's important not to get into a merry-go-round of visiting many practitioners. Now, here are some tips that can help you manage this problem. Rest seems to be the best way to cope, although it does not cure it. Take painkillers such as aspirin for aches and pains. Pace yourself. Take a stepladder approach. Don't overdo it and rest when you can. Avoid things such as stress that aggravates the fatigue. 
Practice meditation and yoga. Avoid long distance travel if possible. Good supportive relationships are important. Join local support group and undertake a realistic, regular, graduated exercise program. Now, what's the outcome of CFS? It gets better with a slow, steady improvement. However, relapses can occur on and off. There are no long-term complications of this disease. Well, the patients may be concerned about psychology about the psychological impact of this condition. Uh, they may have feelings of anger, frustration, and depression, which can be taken care of by counseling and CBT. That's all for today. Thank you for listening. If you wish to hear something about, leave it in the comment box below. Now, if you like my content, do like, share, and subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Bye for now.